Nothing so disappointed. I'm disappointed. Yeah. Whoa. He said, You just broke the ship. All right, good morning. A couple of thank yous before we get started. A thank you to the members of the board for taking time out of their busy schedules to come in today. Also, a big thank you to Craig and the staff. Uh, they had a huge event yesterday, uh, well attended, uh, a lot of work went into that, and then uh, got all of this put together for us today. So it's a very busy week for the staff. We appreciate your attention, and particularly your attention to detail. Uh, do we have any cards, comment cards? Okay, uh, and we'll move right along into uh, our agenda. What, uh, what I asked Craig and the staff to do and in consultation with Rob is to put together uh, some information on what the airport has been doing, not just for itself, uh, there's maintenance things that goes on and all of that, we're aware of that, but also there's the things that we do for each of our stakeholders. Uh, we do it sometimes for them, sometimes in conjunction with them, but we also have a huge economic impact in the community. And that impact goes uh, quite often unnoticed. And we want to get out in front of that and let folks know that, that this is an economic engine. Uh, we're not just about uh, taking passengers from a parking lot, transitioning through them through a terminal, and putting them on uh, uh, an airplane. That's what you're going to see when you're driving by out here. There's much more to that. Um, so a lot of this is in, in the uh, Agenda, but uh, you know, the airport has uh, uh, invested $30 million uh, in, in this facility since 2007. It's created uh, 250 new jobs. That's not insignificant in a town of this size, particularly a town that has the demographics that we're faced with here uh, a very uh, diverse population, but also a very bifurcated population, which you have highly technical people working in the MCAS at the airport, uh, out at YPG, and some of the other industries here, and another demographic of people who are uh, primarily in the service industry or the agricultural industry. It all makes Yuma great, but uh, it, it, bringing in 250 jobs, particularly ones that are uh, related to technology, higher end skill sets, is a tremendous uh, uh, impact on the community. Um, that, uh, that impact, though, is not just what occurs at the airport. It's important to note that 250 jobs related to something happening on the airport actually equates to 467 jobs uh, uh, out in the community. You have a multiplying factor of 1.8, and we thank GYEDC for giving us this information. This comes up to um, you know uh, an annual impact of $23.6 million. Tremendous, tremendous for a facility of this size to be doing these kinds of things. But what's really important is the change in the, uh, not just the scope of what we're doing, but the change in the context in which we're doing it, and a change in uh, direction. Before 19 or before uh, 2007, you wouldn't have seen these things. We put in a building. Uh, we did a lot of other things, but it was status quo. Now we have the defense contractors area that's growing really rapidly. Um, we have made a, a tremendous investments in the GA area. Uh, we're working with uh, NASA, we're working with Boeing, we're working with Lockheed. All of this stuff is happening. And it's a result of the synergy built by the staff and the board. Uh, looking forward, not to just running an airport, but creating a, 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 an opportunity here for people to come in and use this facility. This is the kind of thing that we need to get out to the public so that they know it's not just a parking lot, a terminal, and a walkway there. There's much, much more here. Um, of course, we uh, we pay our taxes, two point, uh, a little bit uh, over $2 million in sales tax revenue, uh, $624,000 in payroll taxes. Again, th this is, these are big figures. Um, then we move into the grant area. Uh, can we? Is that the first slide? Yeah, well, this is just... Oh, this is the construction district. Yeah. No, this is, uh, 
just airport revenue in general. Yeah. Uh, over the past four years, uh, it's pretty much been up uh, across the board. A couple areas it's flat. Uh, but overall, airport revenue has been going up consistently. Now, uh, we know that in, in this coming fiscal year, we're going to have a little bit of a downturn. Uh, we knew this was coming. We briefed everybody about it, but we're not worried about it because by uh, next year when the AIC is online, that uh, is gonna, it's going to start climbing again. Uh, Could you go back to that slide? Mm -hmm. if, if you're familiar with uh, uh, general trends of economic growth, um, the trend for Yuma County proportionally, and when I was looking at the slides last night, I, looked at, I went into some databases. The trend line for economic growth in Yuma County uh, is not quite as steep as this annual re revenue growth. Uh, so the airport is actually exceeding expectations uh, relative to other revenue growth industries in the county. As you saw, as, uh, we contacted uh, GYEDC. They've got modeling software and analysis software that's industry standard. Uh, and asked them, uh, can you tell us what our impact is on the community. Uh, they ask us for certain data points uh, to do that calculation. Uh, that included, okay, how many jobs uh, have you sustained, maintained, or created uh, based on the data set? Uh, as Dr. Cole said, there's 250 jobs uh, that are directly related to what we've been doing over the past few years. What revenue increase have you seen as far as rent is concerned? Uh, these are the new rents uh, that we're talking about uh, that have come online. Uh, and then finally, what is the direct investment uh, that you put into, into the airport? Uh, this was a kind of a surprise to me because we've talked a lot about you know our grant funding. Uh, it's separate part from that we talk about other income, the, the projects we've got like the NASA hangar and like the BIC. Uh, but then also <laughs> there's the DOT marketing grant uh, that's coming here twice and plus we've had outside investment. Uh, the CBP project, that was a $10 million investment that came from outside. Uh, uh, there's a couple others here. The and one that's not even on here is the Sims hangar, as Mayor pointed out from just a minute ago. Familiar FBO, familiar Earhart Hanger. So when you look at the, the actual cash investment into the airport uh, since 2007, $35 million, uh, that's, that's a big number. So, Greg, if I might, some of this would have happened no matter what. But a lot of what you see up there it results from proactive leadership. Uh, amongst the board and most particularly amongst the, the airport staff. This is going out and working with people and vision. It's not just letting it happen. Um, you're going through some of this stuff. Uh, there's certain issues there that you know we would have to do. But a lot of this is uh, above and beyond just keeping minimum standards. It's real improvement, uh, not just maintenance. And uh, we have to recognize that, that difference. <coughs> Anybody can tread water. It's the person who can swim up the frame, who can swim the length of the pool that's going to be the winner. And that's what the staff has done. And that's what we really want to recognize out of this. Um, question, um, Mr. Chairman. About 35 million. What would change that is uh, grants outside of our own ability to borrow money. Our I think we have a slide on that. Yeah. 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 Question there. Uh, so with that money, are, are you going to add on Sims, Sims investment to this slide, or are we going to make this slide available for the public? We'll get that kind of work. I will. I will. All possible. In the Raleigh, I do have the uh, house number. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I can tell you that having the uh, greatest amount of history on the board. The, the difference 
between that slide today and what that slide would have looked like six or eight years ago is light years, there's a light years differences. And most of those things that you see there, I mean, uh, we might have bought a sweeper, but uh, you, there really wouldn't have been one third, one fifth, one tenth of those items on, on, on that slide today if, if we hadn't uh, both through the board action and the staff action and I, change the direction. This is, it's, it is remarkable. And I think that point is well taken, and that's what we, we really want to highlight is that uh, the change in leadership, getting leadership, uh, dynamic leadership can really, really impact the facility. Um, getting staff, uh, or letting staff do their job and do the things that advantage the airport uh, through that leadership can have a tremendous impact. So it's not just what we're doing, it's the significant change that has occurred. So Bill, I really appreciate you highlighting that. It's spectacular. One of the things that we're really proud about is that in all that uh, in all that money that's been spent, with two exceptions, all that money has gone to local firms, uh, local construction firms, and local engineering firms. Uh, so we think that as a, as a real plus. Uh, so based on the information that we gave to UIDDC, this is what they came back to us with as the economic input. Dr. Bolt saying that 250 jobs actually translates into 467 jobs. Uh, with the total overall economic impact of uh, 58 million dollars, 58 million dollars. Uh, and then here are the, the uh, taxes. Now, the, the capital investment of 35 million, you don't see that you know, going on every single year. But the rest of these numbers, you do. And so as you look out into the future, you're looking at you know an additional several million dollars uh, continuing to come into the airport through the uh, through the payroll uh, and, and other uh, items that are coming in. So uh, uh, as as you were just talking about, you know, uh, was it always like this? If you look at the at the investment history, uh, going back, uh, there was a, a big ten million dollar investment. Back roughly in 1999, uh, and then in 2007, that's uh, the terminal. That's that's that is that's that's that alone. Yeah, that was the only thing we ever did. And I, I think there's something to be highlighted here when you look at a, a graphic like this and you see that one spike. Um, it, it can only leave you with the belief mm -hmm. that there was other potential out there that just oh. simply was not being explored. No question about that. And then that's, that's reified as you move further to the right and you can see a steady increase, you'll see a spike, but it's, it's the upward, it's trending upwards. And that's the important thing to know. The, uh, if, if, you, if you just look at it, uh, in, the, in the previous 24 years, uh, there was a, you know, about $28 million investment in the last six years. Uh, since the board has essentially shifted its focus onto the DCC, uh, the, there's been a $35 million investment. So there is there has been a change. Uh, when you look at just the grant funding itself, how much of it goes into where? Uh, in that 30-year history, uh, you can see a lot of money has been spent on the apron, on land, taxiways, and uh, a good chunk on the terminal building. Uh, about a quarter of it, if you just break it up here by percentages, about a quarter of it has gone directly into GA, either in the GA or GA taxiways. Uh, so that's how the grant history itself uh, has, has broken out. Uh, uh, going to go on to the next slide? Please. Uh, so the next question is, well, we talked about the increase in revenue. Uh, well, mm -hmm. Where is that revenue going? Uh, we've increased our revenue from uh, a little over one and a half million to now about three and a half million. What's happening to all that money? Uh, and the answer is, uh, since 2008, 
uh, when we actually started having some money come in, we started reinvesting those funds that we had back into the airport uh, in just a lot of little projects. Uh, and we continue to do that. Now, this year, uh, the, the investment hasn't been as big, and we've already talked about that. But we've identified a lot of projects that we wanted to work on, and we've addressed them. The good news is, most of that long list of projects that we had in 2007, 2008 have been addressed. And so we're getting to the point now where we're going to get into a maintenance uh, uh, aspect, which is less expensive, but that's going to free up money for bigger projects. We've taken care of a lot of the ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 projects. So, Greg, something that caught my attention last night when I was going through this, the generator at the, the fuel farm. Mm -hmm. If the electricity went out, how do people get their fuel? Uh, well, prior to the generator, uh, prior to the generator, we did, well, well, prior to the generator, we had multiple small fuel farms, okay. and there was not a generator on any of them. And so you had the fuel in your truck, and when your truck was empty, uh, I guess that was it. it. No, uh, 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 and so uh, down in the fuel farm area, we, when we first put it in, we put in a dual generator system because uh, we didn't have APS there, and then finally we got APS put in. But in the period uh, 2008 to today, this this is the reinvestment that we put into the airport. Uh, and so, if, if you look at it here as a percentage basis, you can see about a quarter of it has gone to airside. If you add this into it to equipment, uh, most of that equipment is airside equipment too. In fact, I didn't look at it to see exactly what. But if we just look at this half million dollars that, that's gone into air side, where does it go? Uh, with the exception of, of two projects, the one for the and one for the airlines, uh, it's gone mostly, uh, well, it's gone, um, I'd say, equally between uh, the, uh, gym, the GA area and the DCC area. Uh, the DCC is our high growth area, so we put a lot of money into that. Uh, but the GA area has not had a lot of investment for a long time, so we've gone back in and tried to fix a lot of things. And it's also a point out, so because of the DCC area, the general revenue that we can put back in the GA area. Oh, yeah. sure. And the other thing, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to point out that's kind of touched on it, we keep talking about, is we're into it now a maintenance the situation but a lot of what we did over the last five or six years was maintenance that hadn't been done and so we had to catch up and so some of the when you see that one spike for the uh, for the for building this terminal there was money out there to continue with maintenance but it was never it was never sought out it was never gotten so now a lot of what we've done here in the past five or six years is maintenance that should have been done 15 or 20 years ago now being done. Now we're getting to the point where we can maintain the upgrading facilities. And I suspect is this the, is the case anywhere if you don't maintain it on a regular basis, when you finally get around to fixing it, it's actually going to cost you more if you maintain it. Well, that's really yeah. uh, We wanted to look at it as well as uh, you know revenue uh, versus where we're spending the money. So looking at next year's budget, uh, you've seen this slide before uh, in, in our budget briefing where, where the money comes from. Uh, but we also then use those same categories to break down where the money is going. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, well, it's kind of interesting. 21% of our money comes from the airlines. We spend 35% of our money. Uh, that You might think that's kind of a surprise because what does it take, you know, to take care of the airlines? Uh, well, a lot. The airlines is our primary mission, and so a lot of what staff does is, in fact, based on maintaining the infrastructure so the airlines can keep on working. So the airlines take a big chunk. That is the GSA. Uh, it does. It does. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Hey, I think GSA might be even under other. Uh, yeah, I think GSA is actually under other. As far as it's concerned, I have to go look. But. TSA is directly related to the air yeah, use with Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you could say that we spend 67% mm -hmm. 
for a primary mission, I mean, as far as the terminal, the terminal the primary mission puts a terminal and the A. Right. So we're spending a lot of money for the airport part. That, that's right. Part. When you look at, uh, at, at Carmel, we get, you know, part of our money comes from Carmel, and, and they are very low maintenance, you know, so that we really make a lot of money off that. And Craig, Craig, I remember from one of our previous meetings, the revenue from car rental seems to be going up. Yeah. What's I think, I think, I'm just guessing that, but my sense is that is an indication of the other work that's going on around here. There's a lot, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of construction work going on at MCS. Uh, there's always work going on at New Improvement Ground, and a lot of those guys come so here. That's an example of work occurring somewhere else on the airport or in relationship mm -hmm. to the airport that actually benefits. I think also where I think, I think the days of Business paying their, their employees by the Chicago are gone. Well, that's that's what that's what my wife does. She's right. not right. allowed to drive her own car. She has it, it's, it's less expensive to rent a car from Enterprise than it is to use a state vehicle. Well, and I think also, that's right. on the other side of that coin, I would guess that because of the issues we've had with our commuter line of Phoenix mm -hmm. on returning flights. Right, a number of people are saying, yeah, I'm driving the car, they don't know what to do back. Are you suggesting that less than 100% of the flights are successful? It's a problem all the time. Permanent problem. Best storms. But I, but I think, I think, I think if you watch that, you look at that, I bet if you look at the correlation of the flight that was canceled, and the rental car, you know, I you're going to see parallel line. I'm in that group. Yeah. So, and so, and just in summary, if you look at the uh, at, at what the airport has managed to do as a direct investment, uh, we've increased the money uh, coming in. About 25% of it is going to GA, 75% for the rest of the airport. Uh, we've got new lease revenue coming in, and we've created jobs. And then, uh, as far as reinvestment is concerned, about half of our reinvestment uh, goes into the GA and the rest. Other things that we've worked at, uh, we, we haven't been just engaged on, uh, you know, business. We, we have fun too. Uh, we've put in a lot of new facilities. Uh, the GA terminal was a big plus. Uh, that was a desire that went back that preceded me by a long time, uh, and we were finally able to make that happen. We started out uh, by just making the commitment ourselves. And Take it alone, we're going to build a $700,000 building. In the end, we wound up with one worth a couple million. Uh, we've, we've added ramp space uh, every time we get the chance. Anytime we get some money from a grant, we, we try to add ramp. Uh, taxiways go along with that. Today, taxiway line is going in on the GA side for the first time ever. We're going to have real up to speed light. Uh, and then, like I said, more acres. The Military Comfort Center is one of those things that happened almost by accident, and yet it's been such a plus uh, for the airport and for the community. Uh, involved, involvement in the community itself, uh, Jen and Gladys spend an inordinate amount of time working with various organizations in the community uh, because it's a good thing to do. Uh, engineer, with all the development going on in aeronautics, Anything we can do to enhance engineering programs is we spend time on that. And then basically, uh, also working on the airport's reputation. Uh, we do a lot of work, Jim does a lot of work uh, with uh, the city agencies. We've worked well now, we've got great relationships with the city and the county on things. Uh, and we are a member of GYEDC. We give them a, a check every year to support what they're doing. Since uh, we've started to have some additional funds, we work hard on passenger support. Uh, the airport restaurant is an example uh, that we just had a sample of just a minute ago. Uh, we've bought new seating uh, several times. Uh, we've got TVs throughout the airport and an agency support. The first project we did in 2007 was to move TSA out of the lobby, back behind the wall where they had their own place to do a baggage screen. Uh, 
those of you who have been here long enough to remember the two trailers out there, one for customs. Yeah. The port of entry to the United States was a 1950 era trailer with a port on the outside. Uh, we replaced that and we replaced the other eight. So, <coughs> uh, and then, of course, we have any statistics on uh, people crossing the border? Oh, that's correct. It's not by person, it's by operation. By operation, yeah. yes. It's yes. yes. on our website, in the yeah. portal section, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's far better than it used to be. Uh, it used to be when you went into the custom circle. No, no sanitary facilities. Very, very bad in the summer. <coughs> Most people are using uh, flexible. Seven, uh, the board passed a resolution uh, saying, "Okay, we are now partners with MCSU." And that was a, that was a big deal. You remember that? We got a little flag. We got coins made, which we still use today, uh, and we've emphasized that ever since. Uh, we've I, I don't think you want to you want to pass over that too lightly. That was uh, that was a major. We went from aviation adversaries to aviation <laughs> partners. That was causing a great deal of trouble in, in, uh, in projects or in relations or uh, in just the way things were, were going here in terms of uh, uh, day to day operations and the way things were happening. So we're getting ready to arm ourselves. Well, um, I mean, it we was had a battle. situation where the Marines uh, were uncomfortable and in some cases uh, well, they couldn't come on our side and uh, those sort of things. So, I believe that this is one of the major milestones in the progress of the airport um, mm -hmm. over the years. It was a serious problem. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, we became an air show sponsor. Uh, we're, we're one of their major contributors, if not the major cash contributor uh, to, the, to the air show. Uh, we most recently uh, joined with them in their emergency response uh, exercises. Uh, this is such an important part of what we as an airport should be doing. We've never had a major role in that. We don't have emergency responders. Most airports own their own fire department. It becomes a big deal. We don't, and so we tend to get left out. But there's still roles that we have to know about and practice on. And we do, we've, we've always done that as much as we can, but now we're doing it better, more important way, more sophisticated way, uh, with MCSU. Uh, just recently, we bought radios from the city, uh, emergency response radios, so we are now in the same radio system as the entire state. Uh, we've got our own free. We also bought radios from Civil Air Patrol, uh, so, so they are part of that system now as well. And they are a first responder. In fact, since getting those radios, they've engaged in a statewide exercise. I was talking to Christine the other day, and she was just so happy that you know they were able to do that now to actually fulfill a safety mission. Uh, so those kind of things. Engineering partner. Uh, what that means is every week there's a construction meeting, uh, and either Gladys or Mark goes to those construction meetings, uh, and I think it's had a beneficial impact on MCS as well as on us, uh, especially when we've got construction projects going on like we do now where we're working on a project that has the potential to close, in fact it has closed 1735. Uh, you don't want to be doing that at the same time that MCS is closing, you know, 826. And so there's weekly coordination that goes on there now that we've had before. Uh, the UAS thing, those of you who were at the meeting yesterday saw uh, the relationship I mean, how far it's come that uh, we are all talking together now uh, on UAS operations for the future. That's a big thing. And, and Craig, I, I, just as Albert doesn't want to pass over certain things, that meeting yesterday, um, I think, highlighted uh, how integral the airport is to the uh, I think the airport uh, actually was in the forefront of making that UNO was not ignored in this project, that it didn't just go to Maricopa or Pima. Uh, and without 
about the efforts of the airport and QIEDC, I, I, that meeting would have never occurred because we would have been considered. So uh, I think the community owes you, the board, and this airport that gratitude for keeping us all there. You know, Mr. Chairman, uh, I can tell you, sort of playing off what Albert said a few minutes ago, a few years back, uh, MCAS and IPG would have been if we hadn't improved the relationship, that we were we were not considered to be a, a player, and certainly not considered to be a, a, somebody who could facilitate that type of thing. And they respect the appropriate the you know, so in the chair of the yesterday, you know, we've had we've had some issues trying to track the airlines and they the US thing works on y'all over to work at all. They will come with that. I think that will be a major factor that we encourage other airlines to have a good thing. People fly in from all points around the country who need to get here to participate in the UAS program. What's going on? And I think that will show the airlines that, hey, this is the point we need to get here. the demand is there. Yeah. Right? It's going to help a lot with that. that you know. I think your observation is very accurate. There's a bit of if, given what they said yesterday, if, if one of the major other test sites is in Florida and they need to come here, you can't get here. Yep. You can't get here from the southeastern United States without going who the heck knows where. Um, so yeah, they have got to track in another airline. That, that's, that's that sort of domino effect. You do one thing and other things happen, and in this case, they're, they're very good. Uh, just to share a story with you, you may not know. Uh, talking about relationship with the military. Uh, when Colonel Worth was still here, I went over to see his secretary one day, and I handed her a sheet of paper with a pen, and I said, can, can you get Colonel Worth to sign this blank sheet of paper for me? <laughs> and she did. So, uh, I mean, it wouldn't have happened before. <laughs> no, but you wouldn't have gotten hit the scene. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have been allowed on that side of the airport. <laughs> I mean, this is one of those serendipitous things that happens. Yeah. Uh, it came out of, out of that big meeting yesterday. Now the University of Arizona is very interested in coming to World Field. So could you? Uh, after, it's the law of unintended consequences. You know, sometimes it bites you, and sometimes it's like man, you know. Uh, after the meeting yesterday, uh, Gladys and Tanya from University of Arizona up with Ann Wilkie, uh, Director of Engineering at the University of Arizona. Uh, Dr. Wilkie uh, came specifically, she, uh, she in fact said she had had another meeting lined up that day that she'd been working on and she skipped it because she wanted to come to this meeting about UAS. She was so excited. After the meeting, she came down and she met with last night for over an hour. Just talking to her for an hour is her enthusiasm uh, just fills over and affects everybody around. What have you said to her because she was born and raised here? So, it's all the property here. And so uh, she is going to present. Uh, she said she's going to go back. She asked if we're interested in working with them absolutely on the sure. U.S. proposal. I don't know what the details are, but she's going to uh, send something to us. Uh, we're going to work with her on developing something. But it's, it's things like that, that that you never expect to come out of the blue based on other things that you're doing. You know, you start to build a reputation and, and it takes off. So I have, I have great hopes uh, that something will develop from that. And an engineering at University of Arizona is not a, I mean, it, it, that, that's way up in the stratosphere when it comes to engineering schools in the United States. So that would be a good catch. Well, before that you that leave that slide, any UK recommended is that. I'm sorry? I've got an any UK recommended is that. You know, the truth is the truth, and it shall set you free. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I just want to go back to something on that slide. Luckily, it wasn't uh, very much of an emergency, but we forget the uh, the Southwest Airlines flight that came in unannounced with the hole in the roof. That could have been. 
much worse situation than it turned out to be. And our upgrading our facilities, and really good. I think we did a pretty good job. There was some confusion as to where the plane was supposed to go, where the people were supposed to go, and so on. And this upgrade of, of the communications will, will help relieve the impact. Now, if we could just get them to come in. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to when they're airplanes for it. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, you know, recruiting ground. Uh, you know, our efforts in the DCC is, 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 is really focused on adding value to what's going on at the recruiting ground. Uh, that working force, as you can see by the increased revenue, uh, it was a request from the human test center and human proving ground, not the command officer, the uh, command of the human test center. Uh, in a conversation uh, with her, Gail Washington, from Gail Washington, and she asked, she was the original person that said, can you do something like this for us? Uh, and as a result of that request, we now have the, uh, the Comfort Center. Uh, and the Comfort Center itself is such a success story, staffed entirely by volunteers. That, that's an ongoing uh, source of pride. Uh, and then again, UAS. Uh, it was it was essentially a human proving ground uh, that pushed that pushed us into pursuing UAS, uh, and they continue to give us uh, very important guidance and counseling, uh, and will be a partner along in the future. So uh, that that kind of a summary, hopefully, that uh, captured. And I, you know, I put this in my email to, you know, all the broadcasts. And it, I think out of this, one of the things that should come is a, a summary of this in, in the form of a press release that we can send out to folks. Um, you know, whether they pick it up or not, at least we have it in our inventory of tools. If somebody asks us about the airport, we have a, a, a one-page or two-page document that we can give to anybody who comes in. We have that fact sheet. And I've offered to work with, with Jen and uh, Craig or whoever Craig assigns to try and put this together and uh, uh, have that available as one of our tools. Well, and like we talked about, we're going to have the groundbreaking. Uh, it looks like we're not going to have it before the first, and so we're going to have it probably as close as we can after the board meeting, which I believe will be the 13th. That's what you had in the email. Okay, November so 13th. it'll be. Uh, Right after the next board meeting. In fact, no, I think what we're going to do is try to shoot for the same day as the board meeting at 3 o'clock. Okay. So I have the groundbreaking at 3 o'clock and come over here. Does that work for everybody? Does that, that work? Okay. No problem. We'll, uh, that's not firm yet, but we'll, we'll shoot for that. And, uh, the, oh, and so doing the press release, putting this information together is kind of a background document for that press release. Because it's like, you know, here's yet the next investment, and this is what it all means, and this is what we've done, and this is where we're going. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to propose something even more ambitious. Yeah. I don't think Jen is really on the phone, so why don't we investigate putting together a, a, a Sunday supplement to the newspaper, get all of our aviation partners to mm -hmm. pick up the advertising, and you know, we've got this and other stories that we can put in from the editorial. Um, I think there are enough aviation partners out there who would want to, I mean, just the airlines and the, and the rental cars. Uh, they, they'd like to advertise their, their services and so on. And I think it might be possible to, uh, to get a really good Sunday supplement to the paper uh, telling a lot of these stories. And this is why committees consist of more than one person. That's a fabulous idea. Sort of along the line of the agricultural. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think yeah. this guy's experimental aircraft, the doors fall off, probably take an ad. Yeah. Since Rob was out of the room, he'll be a little more point him to write it. <laughs> so, I like that. <laughs> yeah, Jen likes it. <laughs> That's one vote. <laughs> Any anything else? Anything for the you know, one other thing we, we passed over a little bit is the GA improvement stuff. Given the given the security concerns that MCAS uh, uh, sort of pressed on us, uh, <coughs> we may not have done the only thing possible in the circumstances, but I think the uh, access that we managed to carve out for GA uh, on 
under the circumstances, it's uh, second to none. We've got uh, turnstiles virtually everywhere you can possibly need one. Uh, they're, they're large enough that you can take the uh, right to them, so to speak. And, uh, and I realize it's not the most uh, optimal situation from an individual aircraft owner, but I think in light of what's possible and in light of the restrictions placed on it, I think that uh, the staff has come up with a marvelous uh, response to that and, uh, and with uh, now the Martha Taylor complex, the old uh, JMAR hangar, <coughs> improving access in there and with the potential then to build a ramp in there that has a drive up access to uh, aircraft behind the yellow line, so to speak, so we'll have secure parking and drive up. And I realize that's a future project and it's going to take some money to do it, but I, but I think uh, the GA community uh, maybe is a little underappreciative of what's gone in to uh, the funding that's taken to do that. So I'm really quite pleased with uh, the response to that, to our direct future. So we don't have, we still have some people who do not have access to that road. We at least have a road lighted from the beginning of the town of Mission, where we can improve that. Plus, uh, that becomes uh, then the possibility of putting hangar for shades in there, another area of uh, revenue uh, services. So I'm quite pleased by that. Any other comments? Uh, you ready to get this again? No, nope, we're good. But you can if you want to. No. I always like to do that. You, uh, you like to do it? I like to do it. <laughs> yeah, it feels pretty good. Thank you. You got it from behind. I would like to say nice job. And I would echo what Bill said about the uh, supplement. I think that would be really good. I, for one, will acknowledge that I am ignorant of all of everything that, that Mr. Williams and the board has done for the airport. And it would be nice to know that. Definitely with Albert too. So yeah, nice job. I had no idea of the money that had come in, and had Gladys and that's flying on me. That's true. I had no idea, and you know, hey, it's true. It's, you guys have done a nice job. I admit it. Thank you. All right, folks. Just some more.